Hey there, fellow hounds and truth seekers everywhere. There has been so much talk about the coronavirus outbreak and the misinformation going around. Um, it's really hard to decipher. You really have to dig in order to find the truth these days with all of the talk that's going on. There's been a lot of comparison about the South Korea response to the coronavirus and their ability to get test kits out very quickly versus the United States response and how slow we've been to get our test kits out um, to the general public. So I thought I'd make a video and talk about the difference between the, the South Korea response versus the United States response uh, and see what happens. Um, the South Korea response has been characterized as aggressive by the mainstream media. They've really given them a lot of praise, but it's not clear uh, to, to the average person like me, why? Why were they able to get test kits out so quickly and how is that different from uh, how we do things here in the United States? Uh, so let's take a, a look at an example of what the uh, mainstream media is saying. Here's an example from CNN. Since the start of the coronavirus outbreak, South Korea has aggressively tested for the disease with the help of drive through testing facilities that speed up the process. That's what you've heard. You've heard a lot about these drive through testing facilities and how great they are. It's kind of like driving through and get a Big Mac or a Starbucks. Um, of course, that's what they're trying to replicate. And then, of course, you have folks like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez um, praising the response from South Korea uh, with a tweet that she put out a couple of days ago um, about their single payer system and, and attributed the reason why they're able to get so many tests out per day and their ability to scale up so quickly because of the fact that they have a single payer system. Um, so we'll see, is, is, is that true? or not, but what's the real reason? Um, let's go back to that CNN video. South Korea has already tested more than 220,000 people. The quick rollout made possible thanks to fast work by Korean biotech companies like C-Gene, which gave CNN exclusive access to its research facilities. This is the laboratory where a team of scientists came up with the test kit for diagnosing coronavirus and they did it in under three weeks. When we started, we did not expect this kind of the pandemic or outbreak happened in Korea. Nobody expected at all. Chen jong yun is the founder and CEO of C-Gene, a company that designs and sells test kits that identify dozens of different kinds of diseases. In mid-January, Chen says he first instructed his researchers to invent a new test for coronavirus. So there you have it. It's actually a private company. Uh, it's not the South Korean government. A private company saw the opportunity in mid-January. They saw what was going on in China um, and they took it upon themselves to uh, try to get ahead of the market, uh, to be able to increase, of course, their revenue and profits for their shareholders by getting ahead of the market and selling these test kits out into the market. And then according to CNN, uh, they, ordered supplies for their test kits on January 24th, enough to start producing by February 18th, 100,000 test kits a day. Perhaps that's why we're hearing a little bit about material shortages for uh, the test kits that we're trying to get out here in the United States, uh, but more about that in a minute. So they ordered supplies to start ramping up their production of test kits on January 24th, and then according to CNN again, uh, by February 12th, they had had the Korea CDC approval. That's their equivalent of our Center for Disease Control. And then by February 18th, the Korea Food and Drug Administration, of course, the equivalent of our Food and Drug Administration, um, approved the test kits. And uh, CGEN was then able to start mass producing these test kits for both their Korean market, also the Chinese Italian market and other European countries. So basically looking at this timeline, it looked like the South Korean government basically got out of the way. Uh, they saw the test kits worked, um, they provided expedited approval and allowed CGEN uh, to then go ahead and start manufacturing these test kits and distribute them out into the market. All right, so now let's talk about the United States. President Trump has been taking it on the chin. He's been uh, just hammered for the for what's going on with the coronavirus test kits. 
and why it's and, and the fact that it's taken so low to get out. A lot of the pre, the criticism of uh, the Trump administration and the CDC has stemmed from the uh, testimony of Dr. Fauci in this congressional hearing that happened earlier this week. I think it was Thursday or Friday. I'll play a little bit of the clip now for you now so you can hear it for yourself. The system does not is not really geared to what we need right now, what you are asking for. That is a failing. And a that, failing, yes. It, it is a failing. I mean, let's admit it. The fact is the way the system was set up is that the public health component that Dr. Uh, that, that Dr. Redfield was talking about was a system where you put it out there in the public and a physician asks for it and you get it. The okay. idea of anybody getting it easily the way people in other countries are doing it, we're not set up for that. Do I think we should be? Yes, but we're not. Okay, that's really disturbing and I appreciate the information. Okay, there you have it. There's uh, Dr. Fauci himself. Uh, saying that uh, you know what's going on in other countries is, is not what's happening in the United States. Um, and uh, of course, Trump and his administration and the CDC for which Dr. Fauci works uh, is receiving a lot of criticism for that. Um, so why don't you think that US companies, the US private sector saw the same opportunity that Chun, um, CEO of CGen, CGen saw? Why, why don't you think they saw the same opportunity? Let's come back to that. So first, let's talk about um, the different players involved in uh, the United States uh, system when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, issues of public health. Uh, on the one hand, we've got the CDC. They've been in the news a lot lately. You've probably heard of them. It's the Center for Disease Control. This is the organization within the federal government that is responsible for uh, monitoring public health, uh, tracking data on infectious diseases and, and uh, even non-infectious diseases, um, that is their role. And then we have the Food and Drug Administration. The Food and Drug Administration is the regulatory agency uh, that is responsible for keeping us safe. They monitor and regulate food, tobacco, uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, medical devices, all of those um, aspects and they play an important role. As I said, they keep us Americans safe. So what is public health? I'd like to play a video from uh, Thursday's congressional hearing with Dr. Fauci and Dr. Redmond from the CDC. And I think Dr. Redmond does a really good job of answering this question. So I'm going to play. Dr. Redfield, I, I had a bunch of constituents uh, ask me uh, after yesterday's hearing, uh, what's the difference between a public health lab and a commercial health lab. Now, everybody in this room kind of understands that, but would you, for the record and for the folks that are watching on TV, make the clarification between those in the few seconds I have left? Thank you very much. We have a series of public health labs throughout this country whose primary purpose is to do surveillance, to kind of get eyes on what's going on in the community. And CDC has worked cooperatively with them as you know, about 70% of our funding that we get from you all is then distributed to the state, local, territory, tribal health departments, including their public health labs. There's also clinical medicine, the practice of clinical medicine, the private sector that actually tries to provide diagnostics so we can diagnose diabetes or anemia, lots of different diseases. And it's really the engagement of the private sector to get these tests into clinical medicine which is it's a partnership between the private sector. CDC usually develops the test first, gets it out into the health departments to do surveillance, and then the private sector comes in to provide the, the clinical tools we need, need to basically diagnose patients, not the surveillance of the community. Okay, so what really is this public health business, um, and why should I care? Uh, I thought Dr. Redfield provided a good a good explanation for that, but um, to dig a little deeper, I went on to the CDC's re website, and they actually have a whole series of education courses and PowerPoint presentations on public health uh, called Public Health 101. So let's take a look at what they say here uh, in their Public Health 101 series. First of all, they talk about what public health is and what their approach is. And 
you can see here that as a federal agency, the role of the CDC, um, a public health organization, is really to try to do surveillance. They're trying to identify what a, uh, a health problem is, what uh, kind of threat exists, what's the cause, how do we treat it, and then how can we assist the private sector in getting uh, the implementation of uh, what works out there in the market? What is our response? And then you'll also see in their uh, in the education they provide uh, a comparison of what their role is versus what the clinical laboratory's role is, and those are the laboratories that are part of the private sector, um, as well as some some universities um, out there. So pu some public, but uh, but university research centers, um, as well as the private sector. So clinical laboratories responsible for individual health, diagnostic testing, some reference, reference, te reference testing, um, and then of course the management of patients. And then with regards to public health, they provide some diagnostic testing, reference testing, surveillance and monitoring, emergency support response, research, and training. In their self-check, their self-check assessments, uh, to, to make sure you're absorbing what you're learning through their education videos, uh, take a look at this question. So in the event of, they use salmonella in this case, but in the event of an outbreak, what role might a federal laboratory perform or a public health laboratory perform? And uh, the answer here is D. They will provide guidelines and recommend recommendations for testing, uh, but they will not do the testing you'll see that collections for specimens for testing and all of those other things that have to do with testing are done by the private sector. Um, and then they reinforce that here in their hierarchical um, visual where they're, they're saying that private physicians or clinics are the ones that are, their role is to identify initial cases associated with an outbreak, AKA, testing. So what does all this mean? So when Dr. Fauci says we're not, our system is not set up for this, what does he mean? He means that our system is set up for the private sector to submit drugs to the FDA for approval, go through a, a clinical process, clinical trial process um, to get drugs, health products out into the market. What is CDC's role? CDC's role is surveillance. And in the case of an outbreak like coronavirus, um, they are unfortunately the ones that are tasked with designing a test kit. Why wouldn't the private sector do that? And my short answer is that the private sector doesn't want to take on the FDA to go through an approval process in this kind of situation, um, in the situation of a pandemic, because of the cost uh, benefit analysis. Early on in this pandemic, they didn't know if the virus was going to come to the United States and the extent to which it would spread. Um, we actually knew, by the time we knew that it was going to spread, CDC was already in the process of developing a test. And that's their role in this type of atmosphere. So they developed the test, as you heard Dr. Redfield say, develop the test and then put it out there for the private sector to then come in and start manufacturing the test. According to the Virginia Gazette, it can cost a company up to $2.6 billion and 10 years uh, to develop a drug and get it out into the market. So the red tape that is involved with the FDA is real and probably uh, inhibited innovation in this particular case. Not in every case, but in this particular case with regards to a pandemic, the FDA probably inhibited uh, American innovation in this regard. So, is the American system bad? Well, according to the Virginia Gazette, 50, between 1990 and 1999, 57% of the world's pharmaceuticals came from U.S. pharmaceutical companies. In their words, the U.S. is a pharmaceutical powerhouse. We're the ones, or we are the innovators of the world and the world benefits. According to a report that was developed by the Brookings Institute in collaboration with the University of Southern California, it is American innovation 
that, that benefits other countries, including other wealthy countries like France, Germany, and Britain, uh, who are beneficiaries of American innovation. American pharmaceutical companies are responsible for approximately half of the world's medical innovation, according to the Virginia Gazette. So the American system is good. Uh, in this particular case, with regards to a pandemic, we're a little bit slow. One of the, pr the problems though that we're experiencing now because we've had the uh, emergency national declaration um, from President Trump. Um, so now we have expedited approvals through the Food and Drug Administration. We have everything in place now to move quickly, but the supplies that we need for the test kits are on back order. Um, they are in short supply because of the other countries that have gone before us, South Korea, China, Italy, and some uh, other European countries that have done a lot of testing already, and they've uh, unfortunately taken a lot of the supplies that are needed for these test kits. But we will get there. Um, LabCorp and Quest Diagnostics are ramping up and they're up and running, and our test testing capacity here in the United States will increase. So, in conclusion, in looking at this situation, it is unfortunate that we are in this pandemic and we are not able to respond as quickly as we would like. Um, other countries have, have gone before us because they had the virus before us, they had thousands of infections before us, they needed the supplies before the United States, they got them. Um, and we're playing a little bit of catch up now. Uh, but, the U.S. innovation machine is a powerhouse in the words of the Virginia Gazette, and we benefit the world. The world benefits from our pharmaceutical companies and our medical innovation everywhere. All right, hounds and truth seekers everywhere, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I am launching this new channel, so it would do a, it would do a lot of help if you could give a, the video a thumbs up and subscribe, and make sure you click the link on the blog below visit noisehound.com and take a look at some of the other content we have. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and keep your family safe.